Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, hope everybody had a good uh, Monday. Hope everybody had a great uh, weekend. If you are brand new to the channel, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, you know, we try to give a very, very unbiased view uh, of the markets on a day-to-day -day basis via technical analysis. No opinions, no agendas, just more uh, impressive of the data, collecting of the data and trying to spit it out and see uh, if it sticks. So let's talk about the tape, right? So... The NASDAQ coming into today's trading session, if you watched uh, the video over the weekend, uh, we saw you know that the NASDAQ 100 first closed below uh, the 10-day moving average. You could see it. And the question was, were we going to confirm, were the bears going to confirm today and take it down to the 20-day moving average? It was a very, very weird day because if you look at the beginning of the day, that's exactly what happened. And we'll get to the individual pivots in a second, but the cues came down uh, they confirmed Friday's channel. They started washing. AMD started washing. Um, Tesla initially started washing. Uh, Netflix that we talked about started washing. But then something happened, right? The bulls actually woke up and at one point almost reclaimed back the 10-day moving average. The problem with that is it's almost, right? It's almost. And if you look at where we are on the closing bell, you can see it right now. The Qs have put in uh, lower highs and lower lows now for four consecutive days. One, two, three, four. Four consecutive highs, four consecutive lows. And before you turn around and say, well, look how strong Tesla was today. And Tesla did a good job today. It absolutely did. Uh, it, it had a dead cat bounce. Uh, we were prepared for another channel back to the downside today. Uh, but, you know, once we figured out, hey, the stock is just not breaking below uh, the previous day's channel. It's not continuing. There's, there was an actual upside pivot that we had today. We'll get to that in a second. So Tesla had his dead cat bounce. Uh, if you look at the option flow, this is what you're looking at right here. Th this was the first time that we actually saw some call buying um, coming into the name, um, you know, probably in about three, four days as its market declined. You can see some bets here. Uh, 282.50 weeklies, 277.50 weeklies, 270 weeklies. Uh, a massive buyer came in uh, for next year's uh, March 425 calls, uh, lighting up the scoreboard with a million dollars. But it was at least nice to see some call buying that was out of the money for the stock. Now, again, is this a dead cat balance? Is this finally the washout that the bulls had in mind to kind of re, you know, reestablish control? We don't know yet, right? We don't know yet. Uh, I, I think tomorrow, if we can get above today's channel look there's a shot we get back to the five day where i'm going to start getting more bullish on the stock is if we reclaim the five and the 10 day i i, I think and we'll get to the kind of a, it's correlating with the nasdaq 100 the Qs. but if, if tesla could get above the 277 level on um uh on the daily close that will reclaim not only uh the 10 day moving average it's going to reclaim the five and the five is the strongest sentiment. That's exactly what I like to look for. And it's a very, very important level. Uh, it could easily gap up to that level, get re you know, get rejected and start reversing back down. So I don't think the, the Tesla bulls are out of the woods just yet. Uh, but I think if we can get a close in the next couple of days above 277, that will really give a green light for a potential squeeze back to that uh, 299, 300 level uh, that we saw and in institutional money flow is coming in. Uh, ahead of earnings but if look if it gets rejected it starts you know turning back around and again we still have a lot of downside again remember we we want to be prepared on both sides it's not about calling something this isn't social media you, you're either right or you're wrong the stock either confirms or it doesn't you want to be prepared on both sides if you do trade both sides of the market and i think every uh professional trader or aspiring professional trader should should do so uh you have to be conscious on both sides uh, i do like the option flow today i do recognize it was a really good our uh, reversal today, again, we'll get to the pivots in a second, but the most important part is we're still underneath daily supply and until we get above that daily supply, especially that uh, 277 level uh, on the five-day moving average, this will be deemed a dead cat bounce uh, until it's not. 
tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, the big ones, uh, the big ones coming out with earnings. You got uh, Microsoft, uh, and you'll see by the option flow. For some reason, I'm on delay here. Uh, you'll see by the option flow, they were coming with some pretty big size. You can see here by the flow, they were coming with some pretty big size for the August 18 expiration. As you can see, uh, Microsoft is in the 340s. They were betting uh, the 375s. Look at the size here, half a million, uh, 775 for the 380s, half a million for the 380s, another 210 grand for the 380s. Ironically, though, this is for August, right? They're, they're reporting tomorrow after the close. So it would have been a lot more aggressive. They were coming for the weekly calls. But this is very odd considering the stock is coming out with earnings tomorrow and they're betting 30, 40 points out of the money for next month expiration, which is very, very odd. But again, all eyes are on Microsoft. And the question with Microsoft going into tomorrow earnings is exactly the same thing uh, with Netflix and Tesla, right? Is this move baked into, well, the numbers, right? No matter what the numbers are going to be reported, is this going to be a scenario just like Tesla and Netflix? Now, again, you could turn around and say, well, it's a completely different scenario. Uh, Netflix, uh, what you know, got hit uh, because the you know, Wall Street realized it was just a growth of subscribers based on uh, kind of the killing of the sharing of passwords. Uh, Tesla got killed uh, because, I don't want to say killed, but went down in earnings uh, because they were in, announced higher revenues on lower margins. So maybe Microsoft is not exactly the same thing, but again, it's going to be very interesting to watch if that plays out the same way. Uh, another biggie for tomorrow is going to be uh, Google, right? And again, for some reason, I'm freezing up here. I'm not sure. Uh, Google, they were coming in for some uh, pretty aggressive call buying as well. Uh, you can see here, they were coming in, the stock is in the 121s. This, they were coming in for the weekly 130s, 129s, 135s, 135s. So again, uh, Google, just like Microsoft, are going to be the two biggies uh, going into uh, tomorrow's uh, earnings announcements. And the question is, again, can they knock out the core despite uh, how big their run uh, has been? Again, we'll see. That's to be uh, determined. Uh, what's interesting today about uh, the session was it was a very mixed bag. So Tesla had a nice uh, dead cat bounce. Uh, Netflix, you know, finally bounced into the close. And this could possibly be setting up in the next couple of days for a dead cat bounce, just like Tesla did. Again, Tesla uh, was down four days in a row. Same with Netflix. It finally woke up into the close. Something to watch for tomorrow. Uh, but the big ones we're really running today were the Chinese stocks today. Like, look at names uh, like Alibaba, right? Alibaba had a really, really big move. Uh, if you look at the options, uh, at the options for uh, Alibaba, you can see they were coming for... Uh, some pretty, uh, you know, pretty good sized bets uh, for the hundreds, you know, for the hundreds all across the board for the September 115s. Uh, but but look at all these stocks. And Neo was a, a really, really smooth trader, broke out today. Uh, and this is what we talk about watching option flow as a stock uh, breaks out. If you look at uh, Neo's uh, option flow today, uh, you will see that they were coming for uh, the 12 and, you know, the, the 12 weeklies, right? The 12 weeklies, the 11 and a half weeklies. Uh, but they were coming for the 12 weeklies as the stock was breaking out above this 1140 area. But again, a lot of nice moves here uh, in the Chinese stocks as well. XPEV was another one uh, that had a nice uh, big spike. The one weird part about today's session was, if you guys remember Friday, uh, there was that rebalancing. It was the only second rebalancing of the NASDAQ 100 in the last 25 years. And I'll tell you, there was a lot of weird moves today. For every stock that was up, there was a lot of stocks that did not participate at all today. You had Amazon, uh, you had Meta, uh, AMD. These were all red, right? All red today. So it's very, very notable. Uh, letter U was red in the day today. Um, AMD, we talked about Intel. So it was a very, very weird kind of cycle of the discontinued, uh, discontinued uh, value of the weight index uh, that we've known. Like all of a sudden, all these stocks, uh, Amazon, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, the, the top seven biggest weighted names all lost about nearly uh, two points off their weight. So you could kind, you kind of saw that today uh, with the rest of the market as a lot of stocks were selling off. The, the Qs really weren't budging that much. But the biggest story again going into tomorrow's session is, well, again, four days in a row of lower highs. And again, for me to really feel bullish about the market, and start putting risk back on overnight because I have nothing uh, overnight as far as the day trading aspect. Uh, the Qs, again, like we talked about, 
uh, on the nightly video uh, on 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 uh, on Saturday, the Qs need to reclaim back 380. Okay, 380 would be the five-day moving average, and it would break uh, this downtrend. So going into tomorrow again, keep this in mind, guys. Four days in a row of lower highs, lower lows. We start taking out today's ranges. Uh, we're going to go lower, but again, if the bulls start reclaiming back uh, 380, we will have a pretty good rally. We might have a stalemate for tomorrow just because it's one day ahead of the FOMC. Um, the FOMC obviously is on Wednesday, so it could we could run into a kind of a wait and see scenario. We'll always find something to do. I I, I have no doubt about it. But the key is uh, the big rate decision come two o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, another rate hike. We'll see how much. We'll see what the language is. Uh, after the decision, I think that will obviously set the tone uh, for the rest of the week. So let's talk about today's pivots. Um, let's talk about today's pivots. So Tesla, we talked about on the weekend, uh, 255.80 for builds below can flush. Not a big move at all. Not a big move at all. It took out the 255.80, uh, went down to like the 254. They held the bottom of the range and the start st stock started reversing again. Really a little bit oversold. Uh, but again, a little, little initial cash flow before the reversal. We actually had to pivot back to the upside. I'll show you later. Uh, Qs again, they flushed below uh, Friday's low. Uh, we took the, you know, we took the pivot uh, 375, 19. If it flushes below, it has potential to 372. We've got nowhere near that. Uh, the initial flush, you can see it off the five minute here. The initial flush was actually pretty good. I mean, it was pretty good here. I went from that 75.20 all the way down to uh, 74.30s, and then they started to reverse in course, uh, just like everything else. But again, sometimes some cash flow uh, is better than no cash flow. Uh, Meta actually did not participate, and the stock uh, lost more value today. Uh, 291.20 for builds below can flush. Here was Meta. It took out the 291.20 and traded all the way down to 288s. Uh, again, not participating in this rally like a lot of things. Uh, same thing with AMD, the initial flush. Uh, was fine. Uh, 109 and a quarter for builds below can flush. Uh, here was AMD. Again, not a big flush, right? One, and you can see by the five minute, everything happened at the same time. It took out the 109 and a quarter and traded all the way down to 108.50s and then reverse course like everything else. But again, it still ended the day with lower highs, just like the Qs put in four days in a row of lower highs and lower lows uh, as well. But again, listen, not every single trade needs to be uh, this magnificent trade. Sometimes it's just cash flow. Uh, uh, 423, Netflix, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Netflix. Got down to uh, 419. Actually, a pretty good move here. You can see here how violent the, you know, the move was here. Took out the 423, traded all the way down to 419 before it reversed course. And that's why I'm trying to see if maybe there's a dead cat balance in this thing for the next couple of days. But nice move. You know, nice move here. Uh, Coinbase, I don't want to say I screwed up Coinbase. I don't really trade Coinbase a lot. I wasn't comfortable in how thin the stock was, so I took it off. Uh, I took it off for a cup of coffee gain, and the stock just imploded. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, 98.70 and 97.56 needs to build below. Here was coin. You can see the stock got literally fell apart right after I covered. I mean, it is what it is. So if, if all you guys who did hold it, great job. You got a three, four dollar move. I basically made about 16 cents on the trade. Ooh. Can't make that up. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, Tesla, again, Tesla actually got green the day. 261 needs to build. The initial move on Tesla, I took like a dollar and change off of it, the initial move, uh, which kind of sucked. But here was the sneaky pivot. It started reaching and actually went red. I got stopped out break even on the balance. Again, just some cash flow. And then the stock just, just absolutely exploded out of nowhere. Unfortunately, I didn't get back in. For all you guys that did, congratulations. Uh, WW, nice little pop there. Uh, $9 needs to build. Here was uh, WW. It took out nine, went into the 930s, uh, right into supply. And Neo, Neo was good. Neo was really good. Uh, 11 years, like we say here on to the left, uh, they were coming with a bunch of $12 calls. 11.40 needs to build. Uh, they were coming for the 12 and the $12.5 calls. So here was Neo, beautiful run, uh, beautiful trade. Uh, right into uh, the $12 area. You can see really, really strong move uh, trading into the $12 area. Congratulations for you guys caught that as well. Uh, NVIDIA, nice little pop. Uh, 249.20 needs to build. Intraday, here was a NVIDIA. Gave a $2 pop uh, intraday. Here is the, here it is. Here's the, here it is right here. See this old 49.20 level, right? 49.20 uh, traded about uh, two bucks on the way up before kind of reversing course. And I believe that was it. Yep, yeah, that's it. So we know our levels for tomorrow. 
Uh, we know the ramifications of four days in a row of lower highs, lower lows on the queues. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if the bulls can finally break the downtrend and reclaim that five-day moving average. If they don't, well, then we have uh, Microsoft and Google coming out with earnings after the close, and maybe there can start reclaiming uh, the numbers for us uh, for Thursday sessions. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night. On God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.